Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with a question for you. Does the world need another programming language? And I know a lot of people would say no, but me, I say, yeah, sure, why not? Same attitude I have towards game edges, the more the merrier. And today we are looking at Gravity. This is an embeddable programming language that fills a very specific niche. It's basically the equivalent of Lua. This is a language that is designed to be embedded in your application. By the way, this is not my discovery. This guy is trending up on Hacker News. It's near the top of it. Uh, so that is where I personally found out about it, checked it out, and I realized, yeah, this is actually a kind of cool language, especially for the realm of game development. Uh, so I decided to cover it here today. Again, there are a ton of programming languages out in the world, but uh, this one is kind of doing something special. Gravity is a powerful, dynamically typed, lightweight, embeddable programming language written in C without any external dependencies except for standard lib. Uh, it is class-based, concurrent scripting language with a modern Swift-like syntax. Swift is uh, Apple's programming language, and then they finally realized that Objective-C sucks. Uh, so they've created Swift. Swift is a lot like uh, actually script or hacks, in my humble opinion. I actually enjoy Swift, other than the fact it's pretty much only on Apple platforms. So Gravity supports procedural programming, object-oriented programming, functional programming, data-driven programming, thanks to a special built-in methods that can also be used as a prototype-based language, like Java uh, Script is. Uh, it's developed from scratch for the Creo project, we'll get back to that in a minute, in order to offer an easy way to write and uh, portable code for iOS and Android platforms. It is written in portable C code that can be compiled on any platform using a C99 compiler. The virtual machine is about 4,000 lines of code long. Multipass compiler is 7K. Shared code is about 3K. Uh, compiler and virtual machine combined add less than 200 kilobytes to the ex executable on a 64-bit system. And that is the key to an embeddable system. It is uh, light and small in C, easy to compile, very cross-platform. It's all very, very cool things that you look for in this kind of project. And this is an example of gravity code. And if you've used any modern programming language, this is going to look uh, familiar, basically. So you can see how it works here. The key thing that they've got going on, and I'll show you this in just a sec. So the code itself, it, it's it's a lot like Swift or Hacks if you've done any of those kind of programming languages. But if you've used any C++ style language, you should be fine. Key features include a multi-pass compiler, dynamic typing, classes inheritance, high order functions and classes, lexical scoping, coroutines via fibers. Coroutines is kind of a lightweight way of doing threading. Uh, nested classes, closures, garbage collection, operator overriding, powerful embedded embedding API, built-in unit tests, and a built-in JSON serializer, deserializer. You can get an overview of the language right here, all the basic stuff that is included, the, the base classes. Should be a really simple one to learn, but where you're probably most interested is here. If you want to embed embed this into your code, how does that look? We're going to look in just a second at some code to actually, you know, embed a virtual machine and get it up and running. But this particular example actually shows how to register a class. So you basically you're extending the uh, language, you're extending um, gravity itself so that your own code can implement, you know, so you can implement whatever your code wants to be. You can extend the language. And this shows you how to go ahead and do it. So it's creating uh, a new function. And you can see down here, uh, they, they register the VM. They create a new class called my class. Inside my class, they bind in my func. They bind my func to my class, and that's about done. So now in your end code, you can call it like this create a new instance of my class, and then call my func of my class. So my class my funk. So that is how you do your bindings. If you've done any work with Lua, that's going to look very, very similar. Again, uh, the embedding class is C. So if this, if it runs in C, it basically runs in every programming language out there. So doing easy bindings to make this work in C Sharp or Java or C++, well, C++ should be just C. Uh, but any of those languages, you want to embed this and make it work with them. Being C makes it highly portable and very easy to adapt. All right, so that is how you would actually extend the language to add your own features and functionality and classes to it. Now we're going to head on over and we're looking at the source code. So this is an open source project. It is up on GitHub. I will, of course, link that with the linked doc document down below. Uh, but you will see here the source code license is under the MIT code license. MIT license is definitely uh, a very permissive one. And basically, you're limited to the liability that you give to them, but that's about it. Now, this isn't a new language by any means. We're on to version 0.71, I think it said. Um, but this was basically just revealed to me, and I'm sharing it with you guys. So definitely a very cool looking language. And as you saw, it's fairly simple to extend. Now, the question is, how hard is it to embed this in your own project? Well, let's look at an example for that. This is coming from, again, GitHub. There is an example here. Uh, there's a C example. There's also a C++ example if you want to check that out. Uh, here is the involvement. So it's a very, very short example to get um, basically it up and running. So you create the compiler, the closure. Um, handle any errors that happen, create a new virtual machine, uh, and then basically run your code, run your main closure inside of the gravity bytecode right there. 
and then free it up and done. So basically that is how you get your code up and going. Now you're gonna notice uh, we're running some code right here. This code is basically just inlined um, source code that they defined right here. So it's very simple source code, it basically adds 10 to 20. Uh, obviously this will be where you passed in your saved source code on your machine, but you see how easy it is to get it up and going. You load the source right here, we basically you're running that source code through the compiler right there. Uh, you check to make sure that it works and yeah, it's, it's very, very simple. It's actually there, you're running it in a loop, checking the results and off you go. So really getting your this gravity code embedded into your game or project should be borderline trivial. So uh, they've done a very good job there. Again, the C-based nature also makes this highly portable. So you should be, if you had to port it to uh, any kind of different weird platforms, so you had to port it to uh, PlayStation 5 or Xbox, whatever the heck it's called, uh, you can do so really easily because again, standard C with just a dependency on the libc library. You see the embedding is really easy. The uh, expanding we saw earlier on is also really easy. The language is well documented. I also have to give tips to the or props to the site. It's a really beautiful website. And then finally, here we are. This is Creo. Now, I've never heard of Creo before today. And uh, basically, Gravity was written to be the embedded language inside of Creo. Uh, here is design and build native apps easier and faster, low-level native app code development platform. Creo gives you superpowers to create iOS and macOS apps. So basically, it is an app development visual builder style program. Um, programming environment or IDE uh, for iOS and Mac development. And of course, they're using uh, their own code language behind the scenes. The Gravity programming language is created to be part of uh, this Creo development environment. So it's basically a, an IDE or a build tool for creating iOS and macOS applications visually and easily. So it's an interesting looking project. It's beyond the scope of what I intend to cover today because again, I am more interested in the Gravity programming language. Once again, this comes via Hacker News. This is not my discovery by any means, but I do think it's cool. So the key things here, once again, it is very, very easy to extend. It is very easy to understand. It is nicely documented. It is very portable. It is very small. Hopefully that being very small also makes it very performant. Why performant isn't a real world, I never will know. But it does make it more performant. In theory, I haven't actually done any speed testings to this at all. Uh, but it's all out there. The cool thing here is if you go over to uh, Visual Studio, you're going to find, uh, sorry, go over to GitHub, you're going to find projects for both Visual Studio. And if you really hate life, there's one here for Xcode as well. Sorry, I, I just, I, I will never not take a shot at Xcode by far and away the worst IDE out there. Uh, and I feel really bad for people doing primarily Mac development because, oh, the pain. Thankfully, there's C-Lion now, so you don't have to deal with Xcode nearly as much. All right, so there's projects for both getting it down and running really easy, basically clone it, open the uh, project of, of, you know, the preference and run it. Again, it's very highly portable C code, runs in any C99 compiler or higher. So getting it built should be super, super easy. And then once again, running your code and actually start passing in or linking your code to um, the Gravity virtual machine is a pretty trivial 20 line of code process. So again, they kind of nail all the, the, the hits that you need to make a nice embeddable system. Now the question is, why would you choose this over Lua? Lua is probably the reigning champ for this kind of stuff, has a huge ecosystem around it. And honestly, I don't know. Uh, I leave that to you. It's a discussion for the users in the comments down below. Uh, I guess the keyest thing here is Lua is a very, um, specific language. It's got an approach to it. It's very easy to learn, but if you're coming from a more sophisticated language background and you want more of a, you know, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript kind of experience, uh, you're not really getting that with Lua. Lua has a very different approach to both um, data. Uh, everything is a table, basically, uh, whereas here in Gravity, you're looking with more of a traditional C style programming language with classes and organization and the traditional object-oriented and multi- uh, programming model support here. So really it comes down to if you want a Swift like programming language as opposed to Lua, this is a great choice. In some ways it's in some ways then I guess you could say it's more like AngelScript than it is like Lua. Uh, but I don't know a lot of people using AngelScript anymore. I think it's a little too uh, fat. And, and this coming in at you know 200 kilobytes, you definitely can't call it fat. So anyways, that 
is Gravity and an embeddable programming language from the makers of Creo Labs. Uh, I will link to Creo Labs along with the uh, Hacker News article, the Gravity uh, website, and the um, let's see the GitHub repository, all in the linked article down below. But I am curious to you, what do you think of this? Are you looking for an embedded programming language? Um, and the funny thing is, if you say you're from a Godot background and you don't really like GDScript, this would be a fairly simple kind of thing to embed into a programming language or a, a game engine such as Godot, if that was what you want to do. That's the nice thing about easy embedded languages. It's always, well, easy to embed. All right, let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.